First World Order Radio, final lead, final lead. We are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in levels in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. You have activated pioneer land in which have produced this black chemical called melanin. We, what we did was... Peace. Back once again with Dr. Eileen Bay, First World Order Radio. And we're going into Washington information as far as dealing with tonight's subject matter. That is executive letters, trust, a loyal title, as well as UCCs. Let's get into that information. We're not going to hold back. So just bear with us as we get through it. we got a lot to share. I got my co-host, Brother L, are you here? Peace, God. Peace, brother. Peace. Peace, God. How you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very well, boy. All right, all right. I don't like that message with us again. I don't know. Brother Olabala, you here? Yeah, I'm here. Peace. Oh, here we go. All right, all right. All right, peace, Brother Olabala. Peace, peace to the gods. Peace, God. Yeah, that's a good good way to start it with the 5% album, one of my favorite albums. All right, no doubt. I like that. (laughs) That's my foundation. That's my foundation. I will never forget it. 14 years yeah. old coming to information. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> right on 23rd, you know what I'm saying? He's right there on the steps. And the female said, "Um, young female, young sister, she said, yeah, I got to go um, talk with my guy. And I'm like, talk to your guy? Yo, this is a little bit more personal than I thought, yo. <laughs> <laughs> You take this religion thing, you taking this little religion thing a little bit um, um too far fetched. She said, "No, my God, I'm talking about my man." I'm like, "Your God, your man? What the hell?" Huh? And she was like, hey, "I'm gonna introduce you to him." I mean, you introduce me to God? Dang. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that definitely so, went over their head. 
Oh yeah, it went over my head at the time. I was fourteen. <laughs> so, so you know, I ain't know what, I ain't know what they was, what she was talking about. But um, I soon found out, and of course, you know, been dealing with it ever. All right, so we're gonna get into the executive letter tonight, in which that when you receive a written response, you got to understand this now. When you receive a written response from these agencies, and they address you in all caps names, they are addressing. Oh boy! From this state, the issue is trespass. All right. Uh, repeat so, that because it, it's like you went out when you when you said whatever you said, and then I didn't catch it. Yeah. Repeat that again. Address to the name spelled in all caps, all caps name. They are actually addressing the estate. So anytime anyone is addressing the estate and attempting to take anything from the estate. The issue is trespass. Mm -hmm. Now, you can go and see um, in civil, in Title 42, what that is, or in the criminal law, in Title 18, you, um, United States. Oh, boy. It's going out. <laughs> Keep going out. Okay. Huh? You keep going out. Hold on. Well, this must be some good stuff here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no doubt. Whoa. Yeah, but we haven't had out. this type of problem in a long time. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Just with a doctor, doctor order. Yes, sir, brother. All right, can you hear me now? Loud yeah, I can hear you now. Loud and clear. All right, went back out again. Hmm. Yeah, I hear. Yeah, I hear you now. Yeah, I hear you. All right. Yeah, loud and clear, I hear you. All right, so what I was saying was, um, did y'all get what I was saying? Did y'all hear it? No, uh, start out with the uh, all letters in all caps. And they send you yeah. something in letters and all caps. Stop right there. Right, right. All right, so what I was saying was that when you receive a written correspondence from these agencies, from any bill collector, et cetera, address to the name in all caps, that is addressing the estate. And any time anyone is addressing the estate and attempting to take anything from the estate, the issue is trespass. Now, in criminal law, you need to look that up in United States Code 18, 18, and within civil, look it up in Title 42, as far as trespass and the violation for trespass. Now, the only response to written correspondence addressed to the estate is the reply with an executor letter to which you attach the document, you know what I'm saying, um, that has been abandoned on the issue. In other words, if you receive a collection um, letter or a foreclosure notice, a complaint, a summons, information, et cetera, attach it to the executor letter and mail it, you know what I'm saying, back to the agents. If you're in court case and are just now discovering this process, you know what I'm saying, make a large document, which is the complaint, the indictment or information, the bond agree, um, agreement, and if you are arrested and released on bond and the judgment if the case has already been decided, you attach all of that to the executor letter. The executor letter puts them on notice that you are aware of their estate, and now you occupy the executor office. Mm. Mm. Right? That's the key. You occupy the executor office. So the recipient wow. of the executor letter has only three days to act on it after they, after they received it. So, listen to this, it's private. It's not public or commercial, right? So, on the letter, you will put it as private when you send in these documentations back to them before they can um, do what they need to do on the private side. Now, most people, we, we spoke about trust 
on Friday. But trust is inferior to an estate. Trust mm-hmm. are created from estate and not estates from trust. So, like, for example, a trustee has li- liability. An executor do not have liability as they are the only signator for the estate. Estates are in law. Everything else is. All right. Now, I'm not saying that we don't deal with the fiction because we have to, because we living in this fictitious world. They have us. Right. They have us as the straw man. They have us as the tin man, the taxpayer identification number. They have us in these particular roles. All right. So they go after the trustee. And they trick us into the into that capacity. But you always say that you're the beneficiary, all right, or either the estate, all right, um, um, executor. All right. Now, if you're dealing with trust, you say that you are the beneficiary. If you're dealing with um estate, then you are the occupier of the executor office. You occupy the executor office. All right. Now, what I mean by that is that when you write a executor letter, essentially what you're doing is making your name in all caps, civil and small tools. Now, Brother L, you got your Black Law Dictionary near you? No, Black Law Dictionary? I, I don't have. I don't have one. I, uh, <coughs> I don't have one. You there? It's going out again. Still there? Can you hear me? Yes, yes I'm here. No, I, I don't. I don't have a Black Law Dictionary. Okay, brother Olabala, you have yours. Uh, actually, I'm on the move. I don't even have mine. Uh, I apologize. Okay, okay. I, I okay. usually have all my stuff it's laid right. out. No, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Um. Um, let me get mine, and I'm going to read Civil and Small too. Okay. All right. So once again, we want to make our straw man Civil and Small too. Now, let's get to it. Civil and Small too means civically dead. Dead in the view of the law, the condition of one who has lost his civil rights and capacity and is accounted dead in law. Hmm. This is Razor versus Razor, 173, South Carolina, 365, 175, SE 545. So you want to make your straw man. Now, remember, your straw man is actually already an artificial person, artificial entity, corporation, whatever you want to refer to it as. Mm -hmm. However, they are saying that your physical body is that straw man. All right? To pay the debt for that straw man. What happens is that when you make the name in all caps, civilis mortus, You're no longer liable. Okay? That's what that is. You're no longer liable. Now, remember, that's on the private side. You want to be able to do these things. Right? So when the executive letter is completed, is signed, is notarized, you make copies of it. All right, um, you send it to the to the following parties, I guess you can say, by regular U.S. mail, certified mail, with conf- delivery confirmation. So, for all issues, both state and federal, you send a copy of the executive letter to the governor, the attorney general. In your birth state, or in the state in which, and also within the state in which that you're in. Okay. 
Those will be all copies of them. Okay. Right. Okay. You send also a copy to the Secretary of State in your state that you're in, right, or that you're domiciled. All right. Remember, you don't live per se in a state. You live in your body. Right. Yeah. All right. So that's actually what you're making also a distinction of. So these various copies of this executor letter go to these various agencies, putting them on notice that now you occupy the executor seat of the estate. Okay? Mm. In other words, now you are the head naga in charge. And actually, this seat is actually higher than the court. All right? Before you send your documents out, you want to make sure that you go to the register of deeds and you can actually get them on a county recorder. All right? Um, you can do it that way also if you choose to. All right? So, the executor letter, once again, is important because it deals with issues of those corporations always bypassing and trespassing upon your rights mm -hmm. because you no longer occupy the executor office because you did not realize that your name in all caps, especially on your birth certificate and that state file number is your estate and your estate Number. All right. All right. And how we know that is because when a person dies, the same number in which that was on the birth certificate is also on the death certificate. <laughs> that is the yeah. estate number. Mm. All right, that mm, is this yeah. yeah. So that's what you're doing. Now, understand, just like Dorothy went into the and went into Oz. All right, the word Oz within Hebrew means oh, it's no. world made of glitter. It's world made of glitter, but yet it ain't yeah. gold. But then yeah, uh, we missed that part was, when you said the definition of Oz. Yes. Right. The definition of Oz is Hebrew, and it means strength or strong. Okay? All right. Now, you had to be strong to go into Oz. Dorothy was strong to go into Oz. She got worse. She got whipped up into a whirlwind, into a tornado in Kansas, and got swished away, whooshed away into Oz. Where the first thing she did was that hot and crashed on the Wicked Witch of the East. Mm-hmm. And she took the shoes off the feet, which of the East, which was ruby slippers. So she took something from the witch with something of substance. Mm, right. right. Rubies come. Rubies come from the earth, and since they were shoes, it symbolizes her standing or footing on the earth. Which means that of precious gems, precious minerals, precious elements. Mm. That's what she was symbolic to, Dorothy. Or the daughter of Mother Nature, symbolic to the earth itself. All right? Now, Dorothy had to go and find. 
the Wizard of Oz by traveling on the yellow brick road. Once again, something of substance. So here it is. She has substance on her feet, and now she is walking the ground made of substance. But when she gets to the wizard, he's a fraud. And he's in the Emerald City, which is symbolic to the Federal Reserve Bank. Hmm. In which that has made us collateral, essentially. That's why the first person she meets on the yellow brick road is what? The straw man. That's right. And the straw man is looking for a brain. Okay? The straw man is looking for a brain. He doesn't have one. All right? At least not in the original Frank um, Baum storyline. So we was dumb in order to allow for this technology to happen to us, to take away our gold and Hmm. silver, our precious minerals from us as a people, and get wished away into this fairy tale, into this wizardry, this sorcery. And I can't really say sorcery because they don't go back to the source. It's actually um, dealing with um, low magic. In which that is based on mind control and sublim- subliminal suggestion. We out again. Pay your identification number, which is your social security card number. So now straw man deals with your birth certificate, and now the TIN deals with your social security card. And she meets both of these artificial persons on the yellow brick road, in which that leads to Emerald City, which is the place in which that makes this greenbacks, which is the federal. Hmm. Hmm. This is why when it started, they went through the poppy fields, Dorothy and Toto and the lion fell asleep. Because they was real entities. They was natural persons. They was indigenous. Mm-hmm. But they fell asleep. The poppy plants put them to sleep. Just like Hiram Abyss got hit in his head by the three ruffians and got put to sleep and laid in the north. This whole thing was based on the Rip Van Winkle. Awakening from this 25-year spell symbolically. Of course, we know it's been longer than 25 years. But let's say it's been 250 years. That's about as long as this has taken place. With them destabilizing the last Western civilization empire, known as the Amexum Empire, which is the Omec Empire, in which that ruled here from South, Central, the adjoining islands in North America. The Omecs ruled. We know them as the Kushites, physically. We know them as the Songhai Malian in African history. It was related to the Of who ruled here We are the remnants Of that rulership So we had to be put to sleep Mm -hmm. That story of Dorothy And the lion The lion symbolic to the lion of Israel The lion of Judah In other words the real Hebrews The real Israelites The Moors Being put to sleep Or Mother Earth Mm -hmm. That's what the lion symbolized And we were the cowards 
The cowardly lion. Wow. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> I don't know what to do, though. Uh-huh. It's supposed to be the ruler. Right. Right. You're a coward. Be the lion. Right. The lion of the jungle. The lions of that motherfucker. <laughs> Everybody's supposed to be scared of you. You running from everybody else. They're supposed to be scared exactly. of you. Exactly. So, good witch Glinda comes, and she sprinkled the snow on her, which is symbolic to cocaine. Those are the two things in which that they use in order to put us to sleep. Cocaine and poppy, morphine. Look at the history of morphine and cocaine or crack in this United States and around the world. And you can see these are the things, these two drugs is what surplus the CIA and their whole activity since the 1950s, since their formation. Yeah, COINTELPRO. COINTELPRO, Mm -hmm. MKUltra, MKDelta. Yeah. And they're the ones in which they put the crack in the in the communities back in the eighties, along with HIV or AIDS, as you want to refer to it as, mm-hmm. which was made from a goddamn Vishnu virus and a damn, um, which is a sheep virus and a bovine virus, which is made from a cattle virus, and they combined them, and they put it within a base within smallpox in Africa and within hepatitis here within mm-hmm. the Americas. Here, mm. specifically in North America. Mm. And they Man. started out with damn 700 homosexuals in New York City. This is how they did that. Man. So this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. So this shit is more sinister than we think it is. And so we have yeah. to think ourselves out of this predicament because, remember, as Dorothy, she always had the power to go home the whole time. She just had to click her damn heels together three times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Symbolically, the three knocks is Masonic. Yeah, definitely. Uh-huh. You want to go home? You better learn masonry, which is metaphysics, esoteric teachings. Nothing all what is called Morris science. Mm-hmm. Ancient Egyptian mystery school system. Her bok. Hakka. Whatever word you want to use for it. You better learn this shit. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because this is what's going to take you back home. In other words, free you and tie you back to the land and make you indigenous again. In the right standing. Mm-hmm. This is what this is all symbolic to. So when Do- and Toto, which the word Toto come from the word total, sum, summation. Toto goes running behind the curtain and barks and get the damn wizard up out of there. And they find out that he's a little damn man with nothing but bark with a goddamn big ass voice. At the beginning of it. Exposed. Well, we know that the Federal Reserve Bank eight families. Yeah, he was a little punk. Mm-hmm. Right. And these elites are nothing but punks. That's they all. thugs. They think they thugs, but they always got to hey. damn use someone else in order to do their thuggery. Right. He ain't, he had no power, so no real really power. Don't have to he didn't really have no power. He didn't know how to go get home. That's why he was there. He was right. thinking exactly. like he had power. Right. Exactly. Set him up a nice little camp and, and, and made everybody come into his world. Mm. When we already had a, our own world, this is the signs of this, on the dollar bill. The two seals on the back. The great seal is our seal. We already have our own government. The eagle 
or the Phoenix is what we gave them as the symbol, which was the sign under Heru in which that we drafted them to as the 13th clan of the Lenape. Hmm. Which is Washita. The mound building. This is what yeah. this is all talking about. Yeah. So when we look at better, then you also have to the science and with trust about the best trust will be a common law, pure or express trust, in which that is unincorporated. And if you utilize it, you get an EIN, you go to an AB, what is known as a non-interest bearing account. So that's the IRA look into your funds. This is one of the ways in which that Creflo Dollar was able to keep them off of him when they went after him two years ago on mm-hmm. IRS evasions. Hmm. Yeah, that wasn't made public, though. No, it wasn't. Hmm. I didn't even know that because I, you know, cause I was paying attention when they came at him, but I didn't hear how he got out of it. Yeah, I didn't either. Right. Yeah. They went after a whole bunch seen, of them. Penny you Hen and all of them. No, 501c3. He's not a 501c3. He's not a 501c3. No, he's not. Oh, okay. Wow. That's how he was able to do it. Well, what did he have to, uh, to counter that? Say it again. What did he What did he have to counter that? He didn't have a five hundred one c three. What did he have? I don't know, but okay. he had to have been unincorporated, which means that he had to have gone possibly to the Secretary of State. And filled out a unincorporated association, an unincorporated organization form, which is about five dollars, and put his church under that. Or he may have a five hundred one d. I have no idea. What's a five hundred one d? But we do know that his businesses are not in his name. Okay. Hmm. I know that he, he, his what, family is Native American because he mentioned it during the sermon. He talked about his mother in Kenneth Copeland. Right. And, he, right. and matter of fact, Kenneth Copeland uh, did a. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But Kenneth Copeland had did a few videos uh Wichita Slim. Hmm. Wow. You know, because he did a couple of. A couple of uh, uh, videos, you know, uh, you know, for the children, Wichita, and the character was Wichita Slim. <laughs> He's definitely uh, uh, indigenous, Native American. I mean, you can look at him, you know, in all and all robbers too. Wow. Yeah, Wichita well, Slim. Utah, well, Utah is from the word um, Etowa, which is connected to the word. Washita. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. I I oh, pick that up right away. I mean, Wichita Slim. Right. What is Kenneth? What is, who, who, you say Kenneth Copeland? Uh, he's at the church man, isn't he? That the, on Sunday. Uh, yeah, Kenneth yeah, Copeland. That's, that's, that's uh, Kenneth yeah. Copeland is the one who funded Creflo Dollar, and you know, of course, his name is not no damn Creflo Dollar. Creep Dollar. Come on, y'all. <laughs> he took the word creative flow of dollars and made the damn name Crypto Dollar. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Ain't that something? And now he's getting it. Yeah. I see him always quoting the Bible and. Oh, he was one of the main ones teaching uh, we are God. Hmm. He 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 never bypassed that 
scripture. He 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 actually said we are gods. And even used the word Elohim and El Elion. So I never did pay any attention to him. Because I thought he was one of them, you know, European, you know, uh, uh, down, down, you know, die hard preachers or something like that, you know. No, I was talking about Creflo Dollar, but um, he was, you know, he was, uh, he said that we are guys, you know, quoting, uh, you know, Psalms 82 and and John 10, uh, okay. John 10, and um, you know, Kenneth Copeland definitely admitted his uh, Native American. Uh, background, you know, I, I think wow. on his mother's on his mother's side. Mm. So yeah, yeah definitely. Cool. Yeah, I pay okay. attention to these cats. Well, you know, okay. um, peace, y'all. Shouts out to Creflo Dollar then because we are God. <laughs> I'm glad he is telling the believers that because it's true. Um, I have a question, real quick. I got two questions. How do you spell Wichita Slim? Because I don't, I don't see it. And you know, Google know everything. They wouldn't tell me that. Wichita is different names, um, different spellings. It's W I T C H E T A W is spelled Wichita. But then you also have Wichita I mean W I T C H I T A. So it's spelled several ways. That's the reason why Wichita all of that was one and the same, because they always spelled it or pronounced it or attempted to pronounce it differently. But the word or extension of that is the word witch, which is actually mystic. All right? The mystic serpent. Hmm. Well, that's actually what it symbolizes. The it mystic it? serpent. It Say it again. The witch is possible cartoon, which we need to um, either write a blog on or put on the website or paste on both uh, Facebook and check on something. If that's a All cartoon right. for our children. Yeah, he sells it. He sells it, and, and if you get his catalog, he, 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 he it's on his website because uh, it's it's some cowboy uh, movies he did. It, but it was like really geared for the children and stuff like that. I think it, was, it probably was geared for the children. Wichita Slim was the character he played. It was like a cowboy, uh, it's couple not, of cowboy um, movies. Not, it's not coming up. I figured YouTube ahead. Yeah. Go, okay. go, go to kcm.org. You can go to his website. He, 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 he posts it up there. You know, you go in the catalog, uh, uh, okay, that's you know, the merchandise, you. you know, the okay, catalog. Uh, you, you'll, you'll, you'll find okay, it there. Okay, you talking about how you sleep in the Wizard of Oz. Why, do we, to, why do we have to put the sleep? I didn't hear you. I'm talking about Lingard. I was asking okay. you, you talking about, um, I, I don't know, I'm not Can y'all hear me clearly? No. <laughs> well, God, the question for you, you can hear me through the wall. Um, <laughs> why would you why did they have to be put to sleep? Right. Did they have to be put to sleep? Yes, God. To exist in the world of fiction. Otherwise, we wouldn't have agreed to turn. Hmm. Did you hear me? Yeah. Well, I'm glad we're waking up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt about it. Well, that's what the shrine, that's what the shrine is saying. That um, I'm awfully yep. glad that y'all wake up. Maybe y'all can help us set some things right in which that is going wrong. Right. So, the whole thing in the state is shown through the movie or through the book by Frank Brown, The Vision of Oz. All right? Now, and you look at the estate. If the judge or anyone else objects to your statement that office is the highest office presented, um, you know, presenting the court or continue to move forward, acting as if they have authority to administrate the ex- the estate, especially after being advised that you are the executor, you ask for written authority to administrate 
the all caps name. That's what you do. All right, so from outside the bar, you address the prosecutor, which is the adversary, not the judge, and you state, I am a parent here occupying the executor office of the estate. Where is your written delegation of authority from this executor office to administrate the estate or the bond for your fraud? Present your authority now. Mm. Now okay. remember the authority right, remember the, the the attorney has only two cards he can play, both jokers. Number one, the intimidation card and the deceit card. Hmm. They'll use them in order to get Okay. Now, if you have having problems, what you do is you appoint the judge as trustee of the estate so that he has a fiduciary duty to protect the estate. Uh-huh. And you give them directions from the executor. In other words, you as the executor, you give them directions on what you want them to do. And see, if you go to um, general, if you go to the general assembly of each state, they have appointment to fiduciary um, position. It says that a judge should not accept appointment to serve in a fiduciary uh, position, such as executor. So you see, they can't be executor, administrator, trustee, guardian, attorney in fact, or any. Personal representative is state, trust, or person of a member of the judge's family. And then only if such service will not interfere with the proper performance of judicial duty. A judge should not serve in a fiduciary position if the judge as fiduciary will likely be engaged in proceedings that would ordinarily come before the judge or if the estate, trust, or ward becomes involved in an adversary um, proceedings in the court on which the judge serves. It. Of course, we don't understand that because that's um, conflict of entry. Or under is appellate jurisdiction. A judge acting in a fiduciary capacity should be subject to the same regulations or restrictions or engaging in financial activities that applies to a judge personally. Mm. If a person who is serving in a fiduciary position becomes a judge, he or she will compel with this rule as soon as reasonably practical, but in no event later than one year after becoming a judge. All right? So basically, when you consider this um, rule in the real jam, when appointed as trustee, he is holding a hot potato, basically. And he has to get rid of it real quick, like. Right? So, you appoint him as trustee of the estate, which he don't want to do because he's not supposed to be doing so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, you send him a fiduciary letter, and you also send him a fiduciary um, appointment um, form, which is, which is called... Um, form 56 or form 56 which is a federal form so when you send the executive letter to the state court administrator which you also would need to send your um, executive letter there you may mention of the um, attorney in general the um, general attorney you may mention of the governor Secretary of State, but you also want to send the court administrator. The administrator's job is to take care of the problem. Mention of the judge on the case. The judge will consider it, like I said, a hot potato with loads of liability liability attached. He will pass it off to the prosecuting um attorney, you know what I'm saying? In which that you can smash easily. 
You know, in other words, the judge would dismiss the case on the request of the attorney who is charged with righting any wrong that has been to cause to this, you know, to the estate. Whatever problems they cause to the estate, they have to um, work that out. You know, which is the domestic case in short order. You already have a letter sent to the secretary, um, to the um, state attorney general and governor, and the secretary of state, advising of the fraudulent activities of the court. And demanding the situation to be corrected. Hmm. You know, you may also write a letter to the judge to reinforce the wish, the wishes of the estate. If you have not already appointed the judge's trustee, you know, of the estate. All right, so that's the science of executive letters, as well as all. You know, like, for example, um, like, when asked by the IRS to bring your records, being a, um, you can do what's called private executive record. Right? And, like, for example, if a person is getting children taken from them or have children taken from them, the executor can order the return of the child to the state. Hmm. Or the release of prisoners, the executive letter cannot be used to secure the release of prisoners where there has been an injury to um, another person or property. But if there's no injury of property or person, damn it. Now, there's a lot of things in which that, you know, people say, well, you know, we shouldn't um, utilize the UCCs and all this other stuff. We understand um, it's commercial activity. And being that we're dealing with water, we're talking about water law, which is for lack of a better word, deceived, deceivable times <clears throat> when you're dealing with water. Okay? You're dealing with water, it's deceivable because with water, you don't know how deep it is. You just run in head first and you might go in 24 feet on the first step and don't realize it. Or, <clears throat> you know, it's, decept- it's deceptive. You don't know. Yeah. So that's the same thing about um, the UCC, all right? Um, we know the Uniform Commercial Code is not, you know what I'm saying, unconstitutional, you know, in the... And what proves that is based on the UCC 1-201, Four was that there's money. And it says money means a medium of exchange authorized or adopted by a um, domestic or foreign government and includes a monetary unit of account established by intergovernmental organization or by agreement between two or more nations. Right? This definition may be considered in the context of the Constitution of the United States. Two sections provide the basics power vested in Congress, and a power prohibited to the several states. Now, you go further down, Article 1 in 8, Clause 5 and 6, you find that Congress has the power to coin money, regulates the value thereof in the foreign coins. You find that in Article 1, Section 10, powers of the states of union are limited, and it says no state shall enter into any or confederation, Grant letters of marquees or repraisal, coin, money, emit bills of credit, make anything coins a tender and payment of debts. Now, we understand that by early 1960s, uh, matter of fact, around the same time that the voting 
um, bill came around. The, uni- the Uniform Commercial Code has been adopted and declared by legislators of all states of the Union and most territories and possessions of the United States. That the federal government has not adopted it, but it is used as the rule of decision or at least execution in federal courts in each of the several states. It is for all practical purposes default federal law. So, this default, understand, this default, that's what we deal with here. And this is where you know, keep that word in mind because this is where you get this is where you can get them at. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because when you are talking about default and you're talking about um these particular United States um these United States constitutional laws or articles and it says Congress is charged with responsibility for making coins and regulating the value and have authority to prescribe punishment for counterfeiting securities and current coins of the United States. The several states are prohibited from making coins, emitting bills of credit, for payment of debt, and entering treaty alliances, etc. Yet the definition of money based on UCC 1-201 authorized whatever comes down the pipe, including private bills of credit. Now, since they have done that, and we know that since 1933, which is also um, June 5th, 1933, you had the Joint House Joint Resolution 192 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the New Deal. He served the 144th year um, cycle based on Sirius in which that, um, if you get the information from the Almanac written by Benjamin Banneke or Ben Bay Emanuel Muali or Ben Banneke or who was actually a prince of the Lenape, you will find that certain things in which that we find later on with Franklin Delano Roosevelt and what he did was removing this gold from more from back in the money, which was it was called then gold certificates. That's what was written on the money, gold or silver certificate. So right, you can go to a pawn shop right now and go to their money section and see these actual, there's actual money, in which that was backed by gold and silver, still on huh. display. It's on display, still huh? On display. Still on display. <laughs> you can see. So this default and this fraud in which that they're doing with this money, this is like to borrow further into the fraud, consider, you know, consider the definition of credit in the Federal Consumer Protection Act of 15 United States Code 1602. This is what it says, that credit means the right grant, the right granted by a creditor. And defer its payment. Okay. I'm going to read that again. Credit means the right granted by a creditor to a debtor to defer payment of debt or to incur debt and defer its payment. Now, we know that is important because now we have this being that money is no longer backing, um, um, the substance such as gold and silver is no longer backing the money, which is called fiat notes or FRA right. since 1933. Um, with the gold and since 1972 with Richard Nixon with the silver. Right now, we've just been on borrowed time for the last 40-some-odd years. And actually, a government of this type normally can't last past 70 years. All right? The eventual yeah. change of them having to go back to something of substance. Right now, they're using you as the substance, you as the collateral. That's mm-hmm. what the person could Oh. Right, that's what the birth certificate is about. They're using you as the credit. All right, and this is what this is saying is that 
they're supposed to be the role of the of the so called debtor, but they have turned. But check it. Credit means the right granted by the right is granted by the creditor to a debtor. You granted your rights to the debtor. Hmm. Now operate as the creditor. So now you have to use the UCC, which is the Uniform Commercial Code, to take back the role of a creditor or the. Because you have given that away. Okay? Matter of fact, this goes back to um, the show that we did with how the Federal, how the, um, federal Reserve owns you. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about the birth certificate. And we were talking about yeah. the birth certificate, talking about how um, it was issued on special bank bond paper and authorized by the American Bank Note Company. Hmm. Look at your birth certificates in the lower left hand side. And you will see the Midwest Bank Note Company or the American Bank Note Company. That is bond paper that you're holding in your hand, and it has a red bond number on it, and it has a state style number which is attached to. So since they have you operating in this fraud or in this fiction, you have to learn how to take yourself out of it. You have all the form. It's based on the Fibonacci numbers. Yeah. Go back yeah. to Jewish Bank. Go back to Jewish Banking and look up Fibonacci. <clears throat> And understand the Fibonacci numbers and find the federal forms and the state forms in which that correlates to such. But you can't do nothing until you nationalize. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Ain't that something? Ain't that something there? All of you talked about the UCCs and the executive letters and stuff like that. But it's no good until you nationalize. Because your name in all caps on that birth certificate, being that is a bond, symbolizes that this bondage. When that bond come of age, like we said the last time, is at the age of 18 when you become mature. Hence, now you can go and vote. You can now go um, smoke cigarettes. Um, you can um, uh, you get your license to drive. You can... Uh, uh, at one time, you was even able to drink. Yeah, and uh, your mother don't have to sign a permission slip no more. And no more permission slips. And mm-hmm. more than likely, more than likely, you're graduated from high school. So now, you basically is on your own. And you, for the men, you file for selective services. For the women, you get all social services. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's that's how you're doing. Right. That's all designed. So it seems that back in 1913, the United States was short on cash. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and what, it had depleted the treasury. You know that World War One depleted the treasury, and there were several really bad financial panics. Um, one in 1907, one in 1910, um, 1913. Uh, the country was going through it. You know that several helpers popped up during that time period. You had the forerunner Marcus Garvey, as well as also Prophet Noble Drali, in which that was telling us um, this is what Marcus Garvey said specifically. He said that why can't we have our own Cognies? Why we can't have our own Fords? Why we can't have our own Rockefellers? Basically, he was saying that if we took our asses back to Africa, we can utilize the resources in order to build whatever we want around the world. Because Africa is the richest place. As the European knows, that's why they recolonize Africa through what's called Africa. Hmm. Hmm. So we know that by 1913, with the formation of the Moore Science Temple of America, slash um, the Canaanite Temple, we see the formation of the Federal Reserve Act, also created, you know, which established a private central bank, which is the which is the Federal Bank, the Federal um, Reserve Bank, and that's 
how all this began. And that was what we were talking about with the vibes, with the Emerald City. The Emerald City was there before Dorothy realized what happened. All right? So after only about 20 years, things went from bad to worse. During Franklin D. Um, um, Franklin D. in 1933, the United States was unable to pay his debts. The country was bankrupt, as it still mm-hmm. is today. All right? That's why we had to um, get the surplus money, what is known as the stimulus um, program or plan. We had to get the um, damn $700 um, billion from, we had to borrow that from damn China. <laughs> the $70 billion, hmm. we had to borrow that from China, which is actually marked up at the, um, marked up actually at 10 times the value. That's something. So we talking about 700, so we talking about actually 700 Billion dollars that we will have to pay back, and some say even more than that. Nobody knows what the interest is on that. Right, that depends on the interest. But normally, when they do fractionalized banking, it's ten times the value. Mm-hmm. This is how we know that they did the birth certificate. And if you read the IRC with the Internal Revenue Code, it says that a birth certificate is basically worth about six hundred fifty thousand dollars. But that's based on a child in which that's about five pounds. What if you ten pounds? And that actually goes up to like about $1.6 million because you're worth your weight in gold. Remember, mm. you're the collateral now, not the gold. You are. Because the country was bankrupt. So the private banks that made up the Federal Reserve demanded their money and Roosevelt responded. He had to use the only thing that's of any value to pay the banks and continue doing business with them. And that's the citizen of the country. In other words, i.e. us. But that's why we as more say we're not citizens of this country. Because number one, the United States is not a country. Right. It's a federal it's a federal government, which is a zone, which is actually de facto. A corporation. Yeah. Right, a corporation. And based on the word American, we know who the only Americans are, or the aborigines. Color, copper, natives who existed here prior to the conquest of their territory by the Europeans. So we know we are the collateral. And I'm talking about with the privileges that you have accepted. You accepted the birth certificate because, remember, on the um, signature for the birth certificate, it says your mother, and then she was the informant. Right. It says your uh, anybody know when you look up the word informant, you know, or when you, you know, shit, when you just use the word, when you just using the word of, of informant, you know what I'm saying? We know that that's the, you know, linked to the word snitch. Right. Tell you know that your mom snitched on you. Right, your mom snitched on your ass. Right. <laughs> you can call and call him a rat too. Right. Yeah. Right. That she is ratted you out. Right. She ratted you out. Now, right after she birthed you out. Right after she mm. birthed you out, she ratted you out at the same damn time. Not knowing she was going to pledge you as collateral to the na- national debt. Now, exactly how all this was orchestrated is too lengthy to address here. But much can be told. Let me tell you this. The original birth... living United States citizen is pledged as collateral for the national debt. So within two to, um, two weeks and three days of each um, certificate of live birth, it is on file in Washington, D.C. Evidence revealed that there is, is even a federal children's department established by sh- to be involved in this process. It says every citizen is given a number, which is the red numbers on the birth certificate, which hmm. is the bond number, and every live birth is valued at $650,000 or higher in the Federal Reserve dollar in collateral for the Fed. Okay? 
So we So we the commodity We the collapse So you can't march your way out of this Mm-hmm. Right, no, they ain't no marching. This ain't no Jesse Jack asses. <laughs> no Al Sharpton in it. All right, this, this ain't none of that shit going on. But we, we should have been up there in Washington then. What the hell? How about praying? Can we pray our way out of this one? <laughs> well, I mean, prayer works. You know what I'm saying? That's positive affirmation. That helps with you doing something, not sitting on your ass waiting for a white God or white Jesus to come out the damn sky. No. <laughs> That ain't gonna help. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Man, it ain't gonna happen. So since the same time that we received the voting right bill is the same time that the so called um state governments had issued the birth certificates to persons with legal fiction fictional names using all cast names. So the same time we was getting our voting rights, thinking that it was civil rights, you know what I'm saying? And we was you no, know, of course, if we were citizens, of course, we understood from one of our last talks um, some months ago that we wouldn't have to be, every 25 years, have to have our voting right renewed by the President of the United States. Right. The first time it, the first time it was signed was by um, Lyndon B. Johnson. Job. The second time was by Ronald Reagan. Ronald Wilson Reagan, Mr. Six 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 himself. The third time it was signed was by George Herbert, or George no, yeah, George Walker Bush, Junior. Hmm. Junior. Junior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's a granted privilege. That's why they got to keep uh, renewing it. Yeah, is that not a so right? You have a- We're not included. And remember, the definition of American is aboriginal. So you are the aborigines. Or some say, well, I came from Africa 400 years ago. Okay, well, for those who came, they say Africans too. Right. Neither one, aborigines nor Africans are white citizens. But they are indigenous. Based on the definition of indigenous, remember we read that to you from the United Nations. It says indigenous. It says those who have. Yeah. Reattached to the culture they've been told. God damn, this shit is clear as a motherfucker to me. Right. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like the song that you started the show with. The original man was first. Right. Because most don't even know what the hell they're talking about. You just sit back and listen to them for about a damn a few months or two a year, and you can say, okay, this nigga. Yeah. So this corporation then generates taxes and wealth over his lifetime, and in this way repays the collateral that Uncle Sam borrowed from the Federal Reserve. Document is title for the new property. You. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't oh. have nothing by way of nationality, so you don't have no nothing on the record, on the public record to counteract the fraud that they have that they have perpetrated against you. That's the whole point of nationality. Is to take mm-hmm. you back to the land. So that you are no longer recognized as the new property or the Document of title. In other words, they created an allodial title for your ass. That's the birth certificate. So now you got to recreate a real allodial title in which that is attached to a optional form ninety and optional form ninety one. Optional form ninety is a release of scroll. Optional form ninety is Release of of um um property, of real property. So you are the real property. But you have nothing by way outside of a birth certificate in order to say that you are the real property, and that you have personal property. 
which is your property and your assets. And you don't have none of this protected. You don't have nothing by way of countering this birth certificate that they have that the government has made. Matter of fact, look up the word artificial person. We told you the last time. Let's let's go to artificial person. This is what they turned you into, an artificial person. And remember, we just finished talking about the straw man, right. which is looking for a brain. So they already saying you're a dummy. And remember, we looked up the let's, let's, look up, let's look up the word dummy. So first, let's read artificial persons. It says persons created and devised by human law for the purposes of society and government. Now, I just told you that the is the government's self-created document of title for the new property. It's in the lodeo title for your ass. Literally. <laughs> right? Now that the straw man was looking for a brain, why would, in the Black Store Dictionary, they have the definition for bird dummy? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Lord have mercy. So, dummy, one who holds legal title for another. So, the United States, who created this document of title, is holding it for you. But you don't want it back, do you? Mm -hmm. You don't want redemption. Right. You don't want redemption. You want redemption. You want to keep getting shitted on. And you want to march? Mm-hmm. Want to march? Okay. March. And we, we shall overcome. Well, we was right on point with that one, right? We shall overcome. <laughs> we shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. Yeah, all Until the dumb sticks come out. Until the sticks come out. And then it, then it goes, now, now that was the dummy. The word dummy is a noun in here. So you know they're talking about your ass. <laughs> it's a dummy, it's a noun. Is that something? Here it is, one who holds legal title for another. And then it says a straw man. Mm. Oh. Interesting. And then it goes on further to say, dummy, which is an adjective now, a sham, make believe, pretended, in intimidation, imitant, um, imitation, as respected based on predicated liabilities on parent corporations for acts of subsidiary agents, adjunction, branch, instrumentality, dummy, buffer, or tools. All means very much the same thing. They called you a tool, so that means you a hoe. <laughs> Not only is a dummy a straw man, a dummy is a hoe because you're getting pimped uh, by, by the highest uh, pimps of all. Uh, uh, uh. Uncle Sam is pimping your dumb ass. And you happily agree with it. Yep. I believe that's the way it's you supposed to be. You, you see why the night they had to damn keep blinking us out in the beginning and shit? Deep in this ass tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Blacking us out. Comedy blacking us out. Man. So, this is how they have you labeled. And if you haven't learned anything about nationality and you haven't done it, I think y'all need to call me. Get in contact with us as soon as possible. Go to our website. Is of the oldest inhabitants here in what they refer to as North America. We are the actual landowners. We are in history known as the mound builders. But Louisiana Purchase was never purchased. It was made appear to be through eminent domain. They kept going using the what is called the Lewis and Clark expedition with Ben York 
and his wife um, using them in order to continue going westwards because they needed someone who can talk the language. So they needed someone who knew Arabic and Hebrew, which is part of the Algonquin and the Iroquois language. Yes, he spoke Hebrew and Arabic right here in the Americas before the Europeans. Because we But let's get back to a bond. What is a bond being that your birth certificate is a bond? Let's go to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary of Law. It says, a usual formal written agreement by which a person undertakes the conditions that failure to perform or abstain will obligate the person to pay a sum of money or will result in the forfeiture of money put up by the person or surety, one who acts as a surety, an interest-bearing document given evidence of a debt issued by a governmental body or corporation that is sometimes secured by a lien on property and is often designed to take care of a particular financial need. Now, that's what a bond They obligated you this as a baby. Hmm. It does so. As a baby, you you didn't have no consciousness of what you was doing. They just took your damn little ass feet and put on that damn contract, which is that birth certificate, at a forty five degree angle, masonically coded that is. Hmm. Making the square all And day. now you have standing now you have standing in the fraud. Remember Dorothy first thing that happened when Dorothy came into Oz was that house hit the wicked witch of the east and remember she had to battle the <laughs> and what did she do? She had to take the slippers off the witch's feet and put on hers. So that was symbolic to now have been standing. So now your footprints are put on the contract as a baby with no consciousness. You're not aware of what is going on at that particular right. age coming straight out the womb. <clears throat> that is that is foul. So, so Dorothy was young and she represented innocence. Is that correct? Everything was young and she represented innocence just like a baby. Mm. So one who acts as a surety. But but even God damn, look, this, this is even crazy because it says with the condition that failed to perform or abstain will obligate the person. So now when you don't and you can't utilize that bond properly, which is that original bond, which is that birth certificate, and I suggest that you – that's why when you do the redemption process or the UCC process, as we refer to it as, you do your birth certificate also at a 45-degree angle, remember? We put a stamp of accepted for value or conditional accepted for value onto the front and back of that birth certificate, which is that bond, and it's at a 45-degree angle. So now we're putting in a bond, and we're giving an exchange through the private bond set-off and through the chargeback. We're demanding the United States Secretary of Treasury to activate our UCC trust account in order to now be able to discharge, set off, or charge back debt. By way of non-negotiable instruments in which that we use and can actually make up ourselves, utilizing these particular numbers that is attached to our birth certificate, our Social Security card, front and back, as well as also the Federal Reserve Bank, which is one of those numbers on the back and the route numbers, and we use all of that information on what is known as an international monetary um, um, international monetary order or what is called money order, or what is also referred to as the bill of exchange or bond. And we send that because look, go, go, go to Blackstone Dictionary and look up the word bank note. It says a kind of negotiable instrument, a promissory note may promise to pay. 
purchase is legal tender. Along with the coin, yeah. bank notes right, bank notes make up the cash or bearers form of all modern money. Birth certificates are a form of securities called warehouse receipts. Remember, we told y'all this. The items issued on warehouse receipts are described in um, A, um, Section 7-202 of the Uniform Commercial Code, the law which governs commercial paper and transactions, which parallels a birth certificate or, listen to this, the location of the warehouse where the goods are stored, mm. which is one of the for for the reserve banks. Warehouse receipts. The warehouse is, is where, right, is a warehouse receipt. And one of, and remember, we told you about the DTC, Depository Trust Company, and its subsidiaries, the DTTC, Depository Trust um, 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 Corporation. All right? So we told you about these um, particular uh, warehouses with the goods are stored. The date of issue of the receipt, the con- receipt, which is found on the um, back or on the front of the certificate, usually in red numbers. A description of the goods or the package contained therein, in other words, the name, the sex, the date of birth, etc., and who gave them up, the mama who's there for me. The signature of the warehouse man, which may have made um, by his authorized agent, which is a municipal clerk or a state register signature. So now the birth certificate now appears to be at least qualified as a warehouse receipt under the Uniform Commercial Code. Black's Law Dictionary 7 edition defines warehouse receipt. Check this out. A warehouse receipt, which is considered a document of title, may be a negotiable instrument and is often used for financing with inventory as security. Inventory as security. So your birth certificate is a warehouse which is um which is is a warehouse receipt is also a negotiable instrument. Hmm. If you're trying to discharge debt, you can actually send in a copy of your birth certificate with the proper numbers with a um international money order or a bill of exchange with the proper numbers on it. So it's not difficult to see that the state created birth certificate with all caps name is a document evident in debt the moment that it is issued. So your ah. debt soon as it's from being a secure party creditor to being a debtor at birth. So once the state has registered a birth document with the United States Department of Commerce, the Department notifies the Treasury Department. This is why you send your, um, your UCC process or which is your redemption process to the, U- the United States Secretary of Treasury, which takes out a loan from the Federal Reserve Bank because they're the ones who take out the loan from the Federal Reserve Bank. It's the Department of Treasury. And now you're saying that you no longer is going to be the debtor. You will now be the secure party creditor. The trust, the Treasury uses the loan to purchase a bond. You see that? The Treasury uses yeah. the loan to purchase. It holds a purchase money security interest in the bond from the Department of Commerce, which invests the sale, proceeds in stock or bond market. In other words, this is when they take your birth certificate and place it on the book, on the stock market. Mm. Wow. wow. Mm. The Treasury. Department then issues treasury securities in the form of treasury bonds, notes, and bills, using the um, bonds as security for the new securities. Now, how do we know that? Because if you look, those pull for the reserve bank, Swanner. That means your birth certificate and um, your social security card and your Money is all issued by way of the Federal Reserve Bank. Hmm. Okay. So yeah. it means that the bankrupt United States Corporation, all right, can now guarantee to the person, to the, those who purchase these securities, the lifelong labor and tax revenue of every citizen of the United States. 
Wow. Because the birth certificate is the collateral for payment. Remember? Right. So what they do, this device was initiated simply by converting the lawful indigenous true name of the child, right, into a legal juristic name of a person, which is the artificial person or the dummy that we told mm-hmm. you about. In other words, legally, you are considered to be a slave or indigenous servant to the various federal, state, and local governments. This is why they can do racial profiling on your ass. Mm-hmm. In particular, because your state issues and your state created a birth certificate in the name of your all cap person, or official person. So the birth certificates are issued so that the issuer can claim exclusive title to the legal person created thereby. In other words, no, we own your ass. Uh-huh. This is what we need now, to be talking about. Right. Plus, they're not nationalized. Right, but nobody want to nationalize. I, I don't understand that. I don't either. Even and some of your wisest and wisest and sharpest brothers and sisters out here that are uh, supposed to be showing sure us co- co- uh, conscious and or cognizant, they they still call themselves black, and I don't I I I don't I don't get that. Me neither. You know, they hear us talk. They hear us talk about color. People are not colors. I had a Chinese woman to tell me that people are not right. colors. Exactly. So I, I, I mean, you know, what does it take? I mean, uh, I hear people. I don't, I don't I'm not mentioning any names, but I hear. I mean, I mean, brothers that really be. I mean, really be into the science. I mean, really be into the the, the esoteric science of the more science, and they still calling themselves blacks. And I, I, man, I just don't get it. You know, I, I, um, I just finished watching Hidden Colors. They even went and broke down. The history of where Africa got got its name. They went into the history of the Moors. I mean, it's not people know what time it is. Yeah. You know, they went into the, all the history. I mean, it, all, everybody knew what time it was. Everybody knew the history of the Moors and, and, and broke it down. Broke it down. To national, yeah. But they're not telling them to nationalize. No. That's the problem I'm having. You know, like, what's the problem? They never talk about nationality. You know, people know what time it is. They know the history. But, God damn it, it's not a way out. It's not a way out. History makes you feel good about yourself. Yeah. But that's all it does. Yeah. Because at the end, they they said solution. Out. Yeah, that's all it does. Make you feel good. Yeah, because at the end of the, the the DVD, it says solution. And I was waiting to see here, okay, what's the solution? I didn't hear anything. Yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, all, all that does is give them a quick fix, and that's it. Right. I didn't hear no solution. I, I saw it said solution. I said, okay, let me let me uh, scoot up. Let me listen hard. Let's see what the solution is. I didn't hear anything. Right. So, now, the, the remedy you know, is nowhere. Nope. Let me let me switch right. up gears because people want 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 us to get into some some information like Washington or more than who are they? Well, you can go to our website www.drlbay.com. D R A L I L E L B E Y dot com. So once again, www. D A D R A L I M E L B E Y dot com. You go to our website and check it out and go to the section United Washington History and United Washington Reclamation Process. All right. Um, Washington are the oldest people on earth. As we said, the word Washington means eye or serpent. And it's talking about when the serpents, which are the two serpents, which is talking about your sacral bone of nerves, which is your sacral nerves, travel up from the base of the spine, which is called your coccyx, or right above your coccyx, this inverted downward triangular shaped um, area called your sacral bone, 
and these two nerves travel in a crisscross pattern along the spinal column, which is the middle pillar. These two serpents symbolize the two male factors, like Jesus was in the center and the two thieves on each side of him. The left one on the side said, yo, if you be the Christ, won't you get your ass down from here? The one on the right said, yo, stop messing with this damn man. You know what I'm saying? We all going through the same shit. You know what I'm saying? Leave yourself, nigga. And, uh, 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 yo, <laughs> God, uh, when you get to heaven, remember me in paradise, yo. All right, so <laughs> this is what... <laughs> <laughs> This, this is what happened. So this is what these two nerves symbolize in your back as it travels up along the spinal column, which is the middle pillar. Of course, when you study with the mason, you have the middle pillar and you have Jackson and you have Boaz. That's what that symbolized too. You are the middle pillar. Your spinal column symbolizes it. That is the Jacob's ladder. That is, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, the 12 steps. You know what I'm saying, somebody said 12 steps, which is actually talking about a cycle, all right? And so as... You travel up this spine, you know that there's 33 vertebrates. Jesus died at the age of 33, all right? Alexander, the so-called great, died at the age of 33. There's 33 generations from Adam to David, from David to um, Jesus. There's 33 more generations, so hence 66. This is why um, the Masonic Code was to put only 66 books in the, um, in the New Testament by King James. All right, this is what ordered that was, um, the New and, New and Old Testament by King James, the Bible by King James, when he authored it. Um, of course, you know, him being the Grand Master of the um, Grand Lodge of England at the time, and then he got the Rosicrucian, the top Rosicrucian at the time, which was William Shakespeare slash Francis Bacon. And they came together and to put this information together. This is what is all going on. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, when you go to and read about Washington, you can see these people, the United Nations has recognized this back in 1993 as being the oldest indigenous people on earth. We have land ties rights. If you go back to the case 191 of um, the ends of Henry Turner versus the United States, as well as Henry Turner versus the United States and King versus the United States in all three cases. They mention Washington or Wichita. In which a Wichita, in which that shows you that we are the original landowners of damn near more than three fourths of the continent of what is now known as North America. All right, and the only thing in which that they actually own or had access to was what we drafted with them through a lease, a fifty-year lease. Every Peace and Treaty um, of United States and Morocco Peace and Treaty Friendship. Um, every 50 years, they're supposed to renew that. So, um, this is how this is. This is what is going on. So, the Washington of the Choctaw people. All right, the Washington of the Choctaw. The word Choctaw means chocolate Washington. In other words, they the dark skin um, people. In Word chalk and tar, and they put it together. But you got Washington. The Washington is the, is the actual name, not mm-hmm. Wichita, which was another um, variety. Egypt means um, the epitome of enlightenment. Actually, they was the high priest of the order of Anu, which is the same as in your Bible, the order of Melchizedek. All right. That's who they were. So um, look up the information on the website. It goes into details. Um, let's get to Wesley Snipes and his problems with the IRS and why he spent two, almost a year and um, a, uh, actually almost a year and a half, two years in jail. All right? Um, actually more than two years in jail. The reason why is because Wesley never nationalized. Mm-hmm. All right? That's number one. So he never. Yeah. See, understand. When I'm saying nationalized, I'm saying that you don't have a birth certificate under the, your indigenous appellation. So that means that you're not in bondage. It means that you are a free man and you're a free woman. All right? I understand what I'm saying. You have a baptismal record or a live claim birth form from your nation. As now that you are a citizen or a national, you are now a national of your, of your um, nation. That's what you are, now a national of your nation. So let's say you're Washington, right? You're Washington. 
and now you come into the Washita, all right, which is an indigenous um, nation, all right, and you come in and you leave the name um, Samantha Harris behind, and now you're going to get the name. Do not have a birth certificate attached to the name. It has a live claim birth, a live claim birth form, or a baptismal record attached to the name, mm-hmm. which is put on the public record at the register of deeds, which is county recorder. Yeah. So now you have something in place to kind of act the fraud that they just that they did to you with that birth certificate bullshit. Mm-hmm. Now you can say, yeah. "Well, I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm part of a nation. I'm Washington. Who are you?" And now you have now they have to establish jurisdiction. And in order to establish jurisdiction, there's three ways to establish jurisdiction. They must have territorial, they must have subject matter, and they must have per- person matter. In other words, they must have the power over the person. Notice of special appearance or a notice of restricted appearance in court, and you state that you are there in court under threat of arrest and coercion. And that you're not that you're not a Fourteenth Amendment citizen because the Fourteenth Amendment was never fully ratified by the states, and that and um and that you're and that you are not a citizen of the United States because based on the Dred Scott case law, it says that you're not a U.S. citizen, nor will you ever be. Then they have to prove who the fuck you are, and you can't do it. <laughs> and they cannot. Yeah. Speak on the people who uh, because you mentioned Wesley Snipes. What if he would have nationalized and and added a hyphen B or L to Wesley Snipes? Right. You can't do that. Because that's still Wesley Snipes. Wesley yeah. Snipes B. Wesley right. Snipes L. All right. Well guess what? You still Wesley Snipes and you still the nigga that we looking for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you got the L on the bay. <laughs> nigga, you still the nigga we looking for. <laughs> We'll take the Wesley part, <laughs> and then we'll snipe you. <laughs> <laughs> you get it, Wesley? Then we'll snipe you. <laughs> All right? So Wesley need to come up with his Egyptian name, which he has the Egyptian name because he went through the oil of the White Lotus in Brooklyn, New York, up on the corner four, and Brother Hair ruined him. Oh, yeah, he definitely. Oh, definitely. Uh, ben Marie has a, a comedic name as well. Oh, so that's what he should have used. He should have used his Egyptian name. He should have. And then he should have, because that would have been his indigenous, indigenous appellation with his nationality. But being that the White Lotus, I'm sorry to say, is not a nation, you have to be part of a nation that has national ties. All right? And the only more that I know who have been able to um, prove land rights are the Washington. Yes. Who, yes. Say, they, who say they are Moors? Yeah. And not Indians. Yeah. We're not and Indian. let's make it let's make it clear, uh Prophet Noble Ju Ali was Washita. Let's make that clear. Isn't Wesley Stein supposed to get out pretty soon? He's, He's out. out right. He's out. out for the last Months, yeah, he's been out for the last what almost three months now since June. I hope he's listening to the station. Well, you know, ho- hopefully, you know, he knows what time key. it is, he knows yeah, what he time knows. it is. He just, he just took the wrong approach to it. He tried to deal with it from right. a sovereignty perspective, right? And that was the problem. You're not sovereign citizens, Negroes, you're not citizens. And you're sovereign in your own capacity based on a nash on a national on a national level, which means as a group, as an organization, as a society. That means as people. We the people. That's the first section in um the so called Constitution. There's four constitutions. You have the Articles of Association, Articles of of um, Confederation, the Declaration of Independence, and the Decla- and the um, Constitution for the United States of America. Then they switch it to the Constitution of the United States of America. Then they switch it again, the United States Constitution. 
the only Bill of Rights in which that pertains to you are the first ten. Right. The rest of them are bullshit. They're right. Hmm. See, this is a trick. The trick is people keep talking about sovereignty. Once you say sovereignty, you're talking about a nation. How can, you know, like, where are you? Where did you come from? You just came out of nowhere when you came from a virgin birth? Mm-hmm. Where, where did you come from? Yeah. You're just sovereign. You just came yeah, out of nowhere. You're just saying, you know, Lola Bala, you know, that uh, so when you mentioned sovereign, well, sovereignty, you're talking sovereign? about people. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about you're part of a nation, a, a people. Where, who, who, where did you come from? Right. Is that. That's and that's not a nice problem. Yeah, right. virgin and birth, Washington, I guess. Right, and being that Washington is known at the United Nations as the oldest indigenous people on earth, that's what you would say on Washington. I'm from the oldest indigenous people on earth. And that has it proven. <laughs> it's on record. Right, that's on record. People on earth, we know the original man is the is the oldest people. You know, what, hold up. What's the first part? Of the nation of gods and the earth, of the first lesson. No, who's the original man? Who's right. the original man? Yeah, the original the man, the Asiatic man. black man, the maker, on the cream of the planet, God right. of the universe. God of the universe, yes. That God of the yeah. universe. So, the original man, the original woman, are us, point blank. So Washington already ties back to that, saying that we're the oldest people on planet Earth. So who are you? Being that you just came from out of test tube 6,000 years ago to damn demand something from us, and we've been on this damn planet over 3 billion years. Yeah. Being able to travel back and forth to other planets. Don't get that shit wrong. And I'm not talking about in no damn metal ship. Right. What they call I'm talking about the ship. As flame, <laughs> flames of chariots. Flaming cherries. I'm talking about these macabres. Yeah, macabre. Macabre. Turning your body like into a ship. Right. The word macabre, even today in South Africa, is still used to women. When you refer to women, they they are, they are called macabre. In Hebrew, macabre means flaming cherry. This is what Elijah was taking up on. Yeah. So we're talking about real shit here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm teaching you how to balance this thing between heaven and earth. Not to yeah. be too damn. You got to have one foot in heaven and one foot on earth. Okay? Some of y'all niggas got two feet on earth and can't see anything spiritual, even though the word spirit simply means breath. As if you don't <laughs> damn breathe 225,920 um, times in the goddamn 24 hour span. Yeah, definitely. So it, and even then, you still don't understand spirit. Thinking some yeah. spooky shit out of you somewhere. No mm-hmm. breath, but with that you breathe in, comes inside of you, as well as also if you breathe out, goes outside of you. So it's actually the polarity. Okay? Yeah. So the science of breath is spirit. Spirit is breath. Look it up in black in um you look at the word spirit, you see the word breath embedded in the definition. You look at the word breath, you see the word spirit embedded inside the definition. Yeah, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word is nefesh, and the Arabic right, word is naf. Right. Or nefesh. Right, nefesh. Yeah, or nefesh. Nish. Yeah. Right. So is that? So. Guess what my nuapic? Guess what my nuapic name is? Come on, but look. Nafuk. Mm. Nafuk. <laughs> All right. The the spiritual one. The, the one who breathes. Mm. Exactly. Beautiful. So, this is the real yeah. science, y'all. What's really going yeah. on? It's the real you're deal. The you're missing the science on, on, on what y'all need to be doing because. Can't march your way out of this one. You can see that we've been able to explain this right in exact. You know what I'm saying? Showing you correlations after correlation, law after law. Showing you. But we're going to continue this discussion. We're going to go into um, we're gonna go into part four. 
All right, all right. Well, it's, it's, it's continuous. I mean, it's a it's a serious subject. I mean, you really exactly. can't get it, really. Yes, it is. Right, right. You just exactly. tied it back to another lesson you did with about the Federal Reserve. Think about it. This lesson tied in with that one. So it's really, it's continuing. You know, you can't end this, really. No. Is that? If see somebody in the, um, see somebody in um, somebody in the chat said after having land to claim sovereignty, that's the whole key. When you look in Black's Law Dictionary, look up the definition of land. The definition of land has the word more is embedded inside of it. Our mm. land, and this is what it says. Let's go. All right, so land. In the most general sense, comprehends any ground or earth whatsoever as fields, marsh, um, marshal, uh, meadows, pastures, woods, waters, and guess what? Moors. Mm. There we go. So, so moors, when we all come together, M O O R S, which means more than one, we represent the land. So, hence, we'll tie back to her. As a matter of fact, um, Brother Olafala, what did the um, Rex 84 say, which is misnomer yeah, now? Uh, or you know, the they cannot seek asylum anywhere because they bonded this, uh, uh, bound to this land by heritage. So we're bound to this land by heritage. Mm-hmm. Yes, they can't seek seek asylum anywhere. You can't go anywhere. So I'm going. I'm going right. back so to Africa. Right, ain't no going back to Africa. <laughs> no. unless, unless you got to do citizenship, which Ghana is a separate. And our theory is in damn turmoil, so I don't know if you want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I mean, you know, once you really go to work. know the history, like I said, I just saw work. Hidden Colors. I just saw, I was just watching Hidden Colors. I mean, we know the history. You know, we know that we were indigenous. To this land as well. I mean, I just finished watching him color. We got it. I know almost everybody in the so-called conscious community has seen this movie. You know, they talked about oh, yeah. the more. I mean, right. Let's go what's to going heritage. on here? Right. Let's go to heritage because this is going to explain what's going on. Because you said that we are bound to this continent by heritage. This is based on the Rex 84, formerly known as the King Alfred plan, right? Yes. Check this out. This is what the word heritage means. In civil law, every species of immovable. Now, what does immovable mean? Immovable means that it can't be moved. Not moved. So they can't. Yeah. So they can't move us. This is heritage. It says every species of immovable, which can be the subject of property such as land, houses, orchards, woods, marshes, ponds, etc. Now, remember, we just did land. Land also had the word moors embedded inside of it. So right here, the word heritage, land, and moors are synonymous. Huh. When they were saying we shall not be moved. <laughs> right. We are movable. We shall not be moved. Check this out. It says in Scottish law, land and all property connected with land. Real estate as distinguished from movables or personal estates. Well, that's so not just talking about it, history. Exactly. People think heritage, they think, oh, yeah, that's some of history. Exactly. So when they say that, remember, heritage, the word more. And land, all three are synonymous. So when Olabalas made mention of the fact of we cannot seek asylum, 
because it says as minorities, we cannot seek asylum in any other place or any other lands because we are bound to this continent by heritage. In other words, we were here. And we've given you um, the book called, what's the name of the book? It's by Michael Creedmoor and Richard L. Thompson. The name of the book is called Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race. There was people in America 600 million years ago. This is documented. You can look up um, New America, um, Scientific American Magazine, and the, and the Smithsonian. They've been trying to hide these facts. Mm-hmm. So 600 million years ago, we were here. Hmm. They'll tell you that the Omex just came here 5,000 years ago. We've been here. We've been doing Before trade the- back and forth across the waters. We were mm-hmm. international sailors. We were navigators of the seven seas. We planted yeah. our seed on all seven continents. Yeah, and I always make this example, too, that Marcus Garvey was not deported because Jamaica is part of America. So don't right. think that he was deported when you when you when you talk about history, you know the history of Marcus Garvey. He was not deported because he just went to another part of America. That's all. Because he cannot be, he cannot seek asylum anywhere because he was bound to this continent by heritage. So they all they had to do was say, you know, uh, with all they did was basically. Say, we'll go over there. Hello. And then somebody in the chat room, he was trafficking. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm, that's right. Man, I see what we got to have a, a part four. Right. And so some people are trafficking, it simply means that um, something was moved from one place to another. And oftentimes, not necessarily legal or lawful, you know. So, uh, when you look at these particular words, you have to understand is that with more, he would, could not have been exiled because he was from the Americas or Americano, which are the Caribbean islands, in particular Jamaica. All right. He was part of the Maroons, which is also another word. Of Jamaica. Okay. So um, right. we're in it there in closing remarks. Brother R.L. Grand Sheep. Yes, sir, brother. They, they try to black us out a lot. I, I, I hear tonight, but... Uh... Well, we'll have a part four on this. So we take off from here, boy, and hope it did a lot of good. All right. Hopefully we did some good. And if um, you like this, make sure that you'll tell your friends to go back and uh, archive this show because um, we dropped a lot of Jews that they really need to hear. Yes, we did. All about them. Oh, did all about it get cut off? I don't hear him. Uh oh, hold on. Let me bring him back on. Okay. He got cut off. On the bottom, closing remarks, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm back on. Yeah. Yeah, you back on. We got you. All right, good, good. You getting good with it? Yeah, I mean, it was a great show, definitely. Um, and you know, we got to get with it, man. I mean, it's it's just a lot of distractions going on. You know, people talking about sovereignty and and all types of stuff. It's, it's a lot going on right now. You know, people really have to, uh, like like uh, how uh, Public Enemy said, you know, play with play, you know, don't believe the hype. You know, we really got to get into this information. Like I said, you cannot be talking about sovereignty if you're not talking about nation and nationality. Exactly. So, so you know, we got to really, you know, get into this and um, – and so we can talk about, oh, we enslaved, we in bondage, we, you know, we being oppressed. But 
we have given the remedy. This is the remedy. This is the way out. This is the way uh, to fight. You know, we, you know, people always talking about we got to fight. You know, so you know, this is a, definitely a way to deal with this situation. You know, so you know, we have to just, uh, you know, take this as a way to, you know, deal with this, you know, the situation. You know, and stop and stop fighting it. You know, you know. You know, your your spiritual practice is personal. You know how you how you practice your thing, your spirituality. That's personal. But as yeah. far as it's, you know dealing with the nationality and birthright issue, it's you cannot avoid this. You know, mm-hmm. and, and avoid it. Just yeah. just just deal with whatever they dish out to you. You know, and and just just handle it. And just, just you know, because yeah. you and, signed and up. Olibar, for it. And, and brother Oliver is the same black power going to get you out of that. Uh no, okay, it won't get you out. It, you know, it'll pump it'll pump up the crowd. You know, mm-hmm. it'll get everybody hyped up. That's just like a church That's service. Out. It'll get you get you hyped up. You know, they say, "Whoa, that boy, that spirit was sure moving in that place." And you ask them, uh, "What did the pastor say?" They can't remember. Boy, that spirit was moving in there. Boy, Wait, everybody That's was all, falling yeah. out. He was falling out all on the on the floor and rolling. Uh, that preacher sure was going. He was sure was hooping. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but you ask him, what did his preacher teach? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, they ain't but a quick fix. That's all. So, you know, so that you can't avoid it. I mean, you know, uh, you know, stay tuned, you know, keep studying. And, um, you know, let's get serious. Do you really want to be free? Right. Or do you want to be in bondage? Do you really want to be free? Are you just saying that? Uh, we, 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 you know, we being oppressed. You know, we got to get free. All right. Well, here's the way out. Mhm. What you going to do? Mhm. You know, do you really want to be free, or do you want to get paid off the Negro problem? Mhm. Right. Because exactly. people are getting paid paid promoting the Negro problem, talking uh-huh. about the problem. Uh, is it about just you just getting paid off the people and their ignorance? Well, what's really going on? Right. We got a call. Let's, let's go to the phone lines right quick. We got 818. Area code 818. You're on the line. Greetings, brother. Peace. Greetings. Peace. Hey. Got it. I just had a quick comment and ask a question. Um, I know the brother was talking about um, what's the problem. I just think one of the problems is fear of the unknown. I know that was a problem for me, not as far as the information, but just stepping out on your own like that. You know, so we come from all walks of life and um, different situations. And like the brother was saying, we got sometimes we have these distractions, and we're still struggling with ourselves. You know, I don't know. Where, I don't know how. To, I don't know how the information. And for me, I had a. Um, I can only speak for myself. But everybody has, you know, everybody doesn't have a plan. They can just call up in um, distractions. They never put nothing together because the distractions keep in the, keep on going from day to day. I had to learn how to just block them out, <laughs> be honest, right. with, and, stay on, and stay on track to what I wanted to do because I got a personal blueprint that I've been right. striving for and working for before I even started listening to the show. So when the show came on, it just, it was it was just on time for me, so I was working with it, and I'm still working with it. I want you to know I looked up a lot of stuff you said. It's right in exact like you said. It's right in exact. I looked up the business forms. I've been doing a lot of research and seeing what needs to be done and what forms need to be filled out. So I also want you to know I'm working, <laughs> but I'm but it's a, but it's according to our plan. It's just like it's all fitting in, but it's like fear of the unknown. I also want to know. Um, I was looking at the formatting for some of the forms and things, and I was wondering, um, um, I, know you, I know what you said before that we could do it ourselves. You know, there was a little fear in that area, too. I just be, I just be real with it. Um, mm-hmm. right. But more, what, happened, what happened was the more I started looking up those, re, those references and working it into my plan, a little bit of the fear diminished. You know, mm-hmm. bit by bit. As I tried working into my plan, the fear kind of 
surprised and makes you feel it kind of, to be honest with you, it was like a strengthening process for me. Right. You know, it's helping me to over, it's helping me to overcome my fear of what's going to happen when I go down there. Because, see, this, this is just hasn't been done. You know that saying, they said, well, um, and a lot of people on different conscious levels. You know that saying that they said, um, who was Eric Tubman? They said I could have freed more slaves if they knew they were slaves, something like that. Right, that was um, Harriet Tugman, right? She said she would have freed more slaves if they only knew that they were slaves. And that yeah, goes back well, to Alex Haley. Out. That goes back, right, that goes back to Alex Haley in the movie Roots when um, Kuta Kente escaped and was running for his life, and then um, the overseers, so-called officers, came upon uh, a brother and his um, son with a horse and buggy, and they asked him, do he have any of his papers on him? And he pulled out his papers. can't hear you. Apparently, look at so-called black people, one supposedly recently from Africa and one that is supposed to be, you know, just free. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, this is what was, you know, this is what, you know, what was shown in that particular scene. And this scene was shown again um, in a sense with Lincoln, the vampire um, hunter, um, or, you know, where it showed um, the brother who was already a so-called free black, was born free, and he was best friends with Abraham Lincoln. He was symbolic to Pastor uh, Beverly Randolph. And he told Lincoln that, look, I need Lincoln, look, I need some paperwork. I need for you to do my paperwork, you know, for my freedom papers. And this was said right in the movie. They're right in the movie. And this shit just went over everybody he had. <laughs> you know why? You know why? I'm going to play like this. They got their mind on their money, their money on their mind, and right. some of them out there just some of them out there just surviving. Let me keep it real. Some of them out there so, trying to survive so tough that they putting it aside. It's like something go, if something don't happen and it's not worth while, then it's not gonna work them up. Some people up until you know something happened, which would be unfortunate. Me myself, I don't work good within time frame, so I got to be feeling it, and I work with the flow. And that's the only way I can get it done. And uh, um, I want to know too. Um, but any quick question? You mentioned who we can call you if you know in regard to this. Um, hmm. Right, y'all can give us a call at nine one zero three six four nine zero nine nine. That's nine one zero three six four nine zero nine nine. And also and check out our website. And I'm still updating. I had to go to the website because it's easy to to see the issues, you know. But I like to dwell on the solutions because there's so many of them. Um, so I'm, I like to invite everybody to come. I, I want you to go to Healing Wings e store number three. We've added some wonderful products like. More fresh deodorant and toothpaste. We have coconut cream and strawberries. You know, it doesn't have the fluoride, and it's perfect for the entire family, especially children. So those solutions. So now we don't have to buy crap. You know, we don't have to buy fluoride. You know, so it's all natural. It's all good. And once you use stuff that's for us, then you can tell the difference. You have better when you have a, a choice that's melanated. Same thing with the deodorant. It's really wonderful. I don't think I'll ever use another kind of deodorant other than ours. We we, we love it. I wish we'd have done this a long time ago. But, again, go to Healing Wings, key store number three, and check out our Healing Wings products. Yeah. Trying to focus on my freedom right now. And it's like... I'm trying to focus on my freedom right now. I see the store. Right. I see it yeah. there. And I'm trying to work right. on my, my money issue, too. So I'm just keeping it real. Right. And right. my priority right. is getting money together for, fi- for filing. That's the only reason why I wanted to maybe, maybe not necessarily call, but if I get these forms together and I'm doing it myself, is it possible that maybe you could look it over and critique it? And, and you know, that or something? Let's do all the work together and see if it's in line with what you're doing. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You can also check out the um, UCC, the birthright, and how it relates to you. He really goes in. You can zo he zoomed in. The camera guy zoomed in so you can see the form. It was our own personal form. Also, too, you can go to the website and do a consultation with Dr. Ali Nobe. And then once you put forth the donation for your consultation, absolutely he'll look over your stuff. Um, we really love the vibration of appreciating the teachers because, you know, the other cultures appreciate my brother. And he's like, you know, um, knowledge is free. And I'm like, you're right, it is. You know, but, but when we look at, like, lawyers and different things like that, you know, we don't expect them to be free. You know, we expect them to be what they are. And we take and we compensate them as a mass of people. I know I don't personally because of the knowledge that we've obtained. But long story short, same thing with the doctor. The doctor did one need one. But we don't expect their knowledge to be free. So yeah, absolutely. Just go to the consultation page and I'll leave with definitely um look over your no, doctor. No, okay, I understand that part. But I've been looking up court cases and everything, just trying to put it together. Now, all I, he was saying on there that we can go in there and file our stuff. I just want to make sure the wording is right. Um, so I've been looking on different yeah. videos that he had, and I've seen, I've seen the paperwork. Like, I want to keep my mind straight. I want to um, come serious about making some moves. So, oh, good. Now, I understand. I understand. He does consultation, and I'm not going to ask him so much information for free. Like, I've been on this computer all day trying to get all the, get the full circle picture so, when, so I can eliminate my fear. Like I said, I realize, I realize that at the same time, like I said, he don't have to, I'm not asking for the, I'm not asking for the sale. I need the consultation in that regard. I just need to look over and see, was well, is it a case missing? Did I, did I write too much? Because he was saying that we can go and do it ourselves. So the brother brother was saying, well, how he had, you know, talked to, um, not talked to, but was uh, heard a lot of what the brother Tyreek was doing, and he worded his and put it together. He went ahead and filed. So that's all, you know, like I said, if, if it's, hmm, I don't know how to say it. Actually, God, is, we're proud of that. You know, that's why we um, are, make ourselves available through Monday, Wednesday, and Friday via online blog talk for free and then also the uploads on YouTube for free and then even the website. You know, honestly, we're proud that you're studying and looking up this information because it's going to take the multitude. You know, it's going to take a lot of people. So, honestly, it's beautiful when the mamas wake up because then they feel it into this next generation video that was floating on YouTube. And the lady was twerking, and, you know, it just was disgusting. It really was disgusting. You know, you could tell that she was not using more fresh deodorant because even her little four-year-old was like, Ma, yo, you stink, you know, and it was just sad. So the beautiful energy of the mother waking up is just irrefutable, absolutely. So we're proud of that. Continue to study. And, yes, absolutely, Eileen, he would love to look at your documents and give you a consultation, whether you have too much information or what you need to put back in or what you need to take out. You know, because we've all been through this. We've done it, you know. Well, I appreciate that. And like I said, the reason I go through the details is because the I'm not just thinking of myself. Well, if I could do this process. Exactly. So when we actually have put ourselves in the guinea Pig seat, I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. um, my wife and I, we did this you know, say over the last 13 years, put ourselves in the guinea pig seat in order to see what works, what didn't work, what was said, or what can be said in law, in a court, to a judge, to a prosecutor, all of these things. So we have an actual formula, you know what I'm saying? You know, of course, there's no simple bullet, but we have an actual formula in which that can be utilized and wish that, you know, as you go through your trial and tribulation, you can twerk it, you know what I'm saying, tweet it. Based on not having driver's license, based on no registration, no insurance. Um, um, tax immunity. Right, tax immunity. Um, and also helping with discharging. So, right. yeah, we can definitely prove this because of license. Right. The beautiful thing is we are all waking up to the truth. 
You know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm basically the Pisces who doesn't really care about currency, but I sell it because I want what it can manifest. What we're trying to manifest, and you may not have seen it, it's on the donation page, is a healing retreat space. So we're going to make it so as we, as a, because people are not nationality, so it's like trying to have your foot also into the aspects of healing and health and spirituality. You know, Eileen has alternative healing, um, the alternative classes every Tuesday and every Sunday so that people can get the explanation of the a conference call on Monday, so get the washita, the ushita, the the wing did within themselves, you know. So that's the that's the ultimate goal, and so that we don't have to even deal with this, but we have to deal with the law aspect because you know our ancestors just laid down so that we could move forward. And the mm-hmm. further and further we got away from the perspective of slavery, the stronger we got, but the mentally we was like. You know, not on point. It's like everything was all good. You know, I'm black and I'm proud. You know, we was, you know, partying it up. The drugs, the crack, error, da, da, da. So now it's like, okay, let's add on. Let's add on. So it's it's beautiful. And it's real simple. When you look at the nine fronts by Nene Fuller and Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, you're looking at labor, sex, law is one of the nine fronts. Mm-hmm. Education, entertainment, health, you know what I'm saying? Education, um, education entertainment, you know, hey. religion. All of these, these are, these, are nine, these are nine battle fronts. And one of the nine battle fronts is law. Mm-hmm. Now, anyone tells you that ignorance of the law is no excuse. So law is one of the things that we have to master. So, therefore, saying black power even as a lawyer, and not understanding nationality, you know what I'm saying, is nothing to me but a dummy move, you know? And this is what is really going on. Yeah, because once you get to learn the history, so, um, you, you, right. you learn uh, yeah, you learn what, what's been done to you. Right. Now you got to find the remedy of how to get out the mess, because you know the history, you know what's been done to you, now, how do I get out? That's where the law comes in. That's where knowing the law and knowing the remedy, the solution, to how to get out. Well, let's call, let's call it soul then. Because it's like a song that's playing in your head. Right. You know, so but that's nobody, how they can see that they no, want nobody, to. Nobody is insulting. The point is, is that we have to, you know what I'm saying, analyze what is going to work for us in front. And if you want to chant black power, then you have to work at it from their from the perspective in which that you saying that you're going to work from it from, which is war. If you're going to, you know, be the war aspect, then you must have a military. You put the military structure together and therefore structure it. However, don't be bashing the law aspect at the same time when nine battlefronts, there's religion, there's sex, there's um, economics, there's religion, there's Politics, there's all these other aspects of this nine battlefront, and we need to line up based on which conscious center of each of these particular um, lines and hold the line. You know what I'm saying? That's how we're going to be able to maintain against supposed, you know, against the so called white supremacy. That's what this is all based on the so called white supremacy. It gives us the illusion. You know what I'm saying? We know that is actually denationalization. But beyond denationalization, they're still using these things as a racial market, just like they did with the Trayvon Martin case. All right? Before you get into that. If we had a military, would we say that that would have happened? You know what I'm saying? Or would have taken place? Because there would have been repercussions to those police officers. I would say yes. You know what I'm saying? Military, and through, it would happen. And through we have Zimmerman. To, you have to have, like, experience for you to be respected. In the past, our experience has not been that of respectability. And that's the whole reason for structuring each of these lines of defense so that, okay. the, so that respect is gained. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's that, why the law, and that we're not looked at as being civil as more respected. Too. And as the law, we were being respected. They were open the door for us. They were telling us that they were proud of us. So this is great 
that we're adding on in the courtroom. Because for so long, the courtroom, I know when we were there, it was 95 to 98% melanated people. So there ain't no other people that look that's committing crimes. It was serious. But I, what I want to make a challenge to, not just the RBG, but everybody, let's stop bashing each other. Period. Let's stop bashing each other and how they're doing things. Do what you're supposed to do and let them do what they're supposed to do. And inshallah, God willing, make manifest it all come together and fit like a puzzle piece. Then when it comes time together, and if we're supposed to bring it together, then it'll, it'll fit. If you're not, then it won't, whatever. But it, still, on that side of the mountain, they add it on. No and I'm not going to be dissing them. So that's the challenge. Let's stop dissing each other. Stop having something negative to say. And if somebody has something negative to say uh, to you about somebody and what they're doing, then maybe you should ask them, you know, what I am. What you doing? Okay. And how they doing stuff? Come on. Come on, let's add on other than that. But the older body got. I think we lost Brother L. Brother L is right here. Yeah, I'm here. Right. Yeah, because it's after 10. Right, it's past 10. <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate you, Brother L. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Brother Olabato? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, you got any closing remarks before we go? Uh well that that's pretty much it. I think we covered it all, you know. And I uh, just about appreciate. It. Yeah, and I'm and I, it's good to hear you, uh, Francis. You know. Count? I was thinking the same thing about you. It's good to hear you because when you add on with that Leo the lion it's supposed to be strength, I was like, go ahead. Yeah, you know it's always good to talk to you. It's good to hear you. You know. You know, I you know I love y'all so much. You know. Yeah, we do. We do know God, and we love you too. We really appreciate you, Torres. You know, you got yeah. add on because Torres, y'all be oh. knowing what's going on in this planet. Oh yeah, we we, we about to get we about to get busy. You know, we about to get busy. Yep. Yeah, we sure are. Well, I have an announcement. I know we're gonna be in Chicago. Um, with a conference with some beautiful people, um, the end of September. How about you, God? You got anything? No doubt. Um, make sure that y'all check our nationality. Understand the we got into heritage tonight. And show how land, heritage, as well as also moors are all synonymous to each other. And it ties you back to um, you being on this land, the oldest people of this land, not just throughout the world. Um, our great generals told us, you know, Dr. Khaled Muhammad, you know, Africa is our throne, but the earth is our home. So since that is the case, we'll leave you all with that. And uh, we out of here. Make sure y'all check out our um, astrology charts on www.drlemelbay.com. Go to the astrology section and um, start getting your astrology on because we're dealing with cosmology. Um, and that's things in which that you need to know as far as coming events for your life, your, your children, so forth and so on. So um, we're trying to get all that in. All right, we out of here. Peace. <laughs> First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio, every Wednesday, 8 p.m., got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio.
just really to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Burr. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Burr. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. Burr. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Radio. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it.